Hello, hello. I thought I might get kicked off again a little bit earlier. I've managed to get everything set up nice and neatly. I was doing a bit of painting before, just a little, a quick little sketch to, to warm up. It's something I try to do before these lives to just get my, um, yeah, get myself in the, in the mood and a um, little bit, a little bit more, more carefree with the, the brush strokes. Um, but I'd like to welcome you to this uh, stream, this workshop. And for those of you who haven't um, come to one of these before, if you're, you're new, my name's Darren and I'm an artist over in Melbourne in Australia. And I basically run a whole bunch of these workshops and I do them, uh, these streams every Wednesdays and Saturdays these days. So kind of um, trying out different days, perhaps in the next coming weeks to see uh, if we can get some some uh, better times for some of you guys who are watching. Um, but I'll go through a little bit about my my work for a few minutes. And um, if you're watching along today, I know for a lot of people over in the, the States, it's, uh, it's very early in the morning. And uh, around this time, it's mostly, mostly if you're Aussies watching, maybe um, uh, maybe a few few people over from um, from the States if they're still they're still awake and I can see Gail's got a message in the chat. Gail says, hi there, I'm, I almost fell asleep. It's 2 a.m. <laughs> oh, geez, it's very early for you, Gail. Um, next week and perhaps the, the, in the coming weeks, I'm going to try to do a few earlier in the mornings. So uh, just some bonus ones uh, in the morning. So I hope that will help you out a bit uh, because I, I know it probably makes more sense um, and it's a lot probably a lot easier for you and you get more value out of it while I'm here and you can ask questions. So um, let me know if you are watching along, let me know where you're, you're from and how long you've been painting for, what kind of got you into, into watercolor painting in the first place as well. I'd love to, love to hear from some of you. And um, yeah, if you're if you're if you're awake or if you're watching, I know there's a few uh, people also a few viewers from um, Asia and also from uh, a few different few different areas in um, another side of the, the world too. So uh, I'll go through a little bit about my work. As you can see here, this is a little sketch uh, that I did of Melbourne, and it's uh, one I did a couple yeah, a couple of days ago actually. Um, and I'm making a new class at the moment to do with tonal uh, watercolors. So how to uh, how to um, get your head around tone because I think that's one of the most important aspects of of painting. A lot of people focus a lot on color and they um, think, okay, if we have lots of um, you know, if I just get the right colors, you know, it's going to look good. But uh, mainly, I would say tone is the is the big factor here in making sure that uh, we're portraying areas of light and shadow and able to get elements of depth in your painting. So if everything's all the same tone, what happens is that you often get beginners complaining. It's it just all looks, um, you, you know, all very wishy washy, and it all kind of blends together. There's no sharpness. Um, you know, it's all the same. Uh, basically on the same frequency. So, I mean, it's you probably explain this a bit better, but um, I'll go through a little bit about tone today as well, guys. So uh, here's a few bits and pieces of my work. So I've done, a, I've done, you know, some sketches lately. Here are a few more. That was one I did last, I think it was last Wednesday, no, last Saturday, last Saturday I did. So I was fairly pleased with, with this one. I think some of you guys were as well. I was getting a bit, annoyed at drawing in all these all these little windows but what we're going to be doing today is uh, something similar to i wouldn't say this scene but a line and wash scene so you're going to be learning how to draw in pen and then you're going to be using watercolor i'm going to show you how to color everything in so you're kind of getting two in one okay but, and i think with the drawing a lot of people get a bit worried because you're you're drawing with the with the pen and um it's permanent. I also draw straight onto the paper with the pen. Um, and so I never know 100% how it's going to turn out. It looks like the reference. I try to make it look like the reference, but I, I also try not to get too obsessed with the reference photo in trying to replicate everything too, because um, 
I think I think when you're playing that game, it's a very dangerous game where you uh, you're starting to compare what you're painting and you're drawing to the reference. And especially if you're doing something, you want to make something your own kind of uh, impression or uh, your own interpretation of what you're seeing that can get in the way when you're too focused on the reference. However, the reference is also very important to imply a, set, a context, a sense of place. So I think it's also if you're doing a you know a place like this in Copenhagen, I mean, it needs to be recognizable as well. So I'll show you a little bit uh, about how I measure objects, how I basically get in a scene and draw. So that will help you uh, to do uh, with your drawing. So uh, Paul's here as well. Hey, doing Paul, uh, Paul Bruce, uh, Melbourne here too. Love these sessions you run. Thank you, Paul. And I'm glad you, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you're enjoying them. I, you know, find it's a good good way for me to to wind down um just before just before dinner and there's still a bit of light as well um might head off to the gym afterwards too um but this is a the one we're doing today this melbourne scene is actually was requested by one of my patrons on patreon yvonne and yvonne's um wanted she wanted to do something with trams and she asked uh, whether we could do something uh yeah with 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 trams in melbourne and i said me hey, why not so i've managed to find a picture um i think she was saying electric cars uh what's it Le cable cars in the beginning and i was thinking I don't really see too many cable cars in melbourne but she actually meant she actually meant the, the trams so good thing we we cleared that up um gail says i fear making mistakes with the pen hey um that's that's a pretty um that you know it's pretty pretty justified i'd say gail uh to start off with because uh, unlike pencil, when you when you're going in with the pen, you just can't uh, rub out. You just can't rub out. So you have to accept, essentially, uh, whatever's going to um, go into the paper. But another thing is that when you have when you go back in with the watercolors later, you can also recover areas. So say if you draw an area in, um, you can you go in with a darker bit of watercolor and cover up some of the 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 areas that you might want to readjust and things like that i've done that here for some areas where i've made some areas a little bit too lighter i've gone in with the watercolors and darkened shifted areas as well very slightly so um i think the main thing is don't be um look at mistakes as a way of a way of like progressing because i i make mistakes constantly throughout all my paintings even through these lives and i used to you know used to used to bug me a lot years ago when I just make you know something didn't turn out well with the painting I'd stop chuck it away grab another sheet of paper and start again um, learn to work with the mistake um, learn to accept it as part of the the the, the kind of process of painting and drawing because certainly you know certainly when you're starting out you're going to make a lot of mistakes and certainly when you even as an experienced painter um, you're still going to make mistakes and uh, sometimes they're good Sometimes, um, you know, they're just things that you learn from and you can say next time, hey, I'm going to I'm going to keep trying that one again and maybe it will turn out better if I do this or or maybe I won't do that again next time and I'll try doing more of this. So um, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, Gail. I think, um, you, you, you know, sometimes you can stress yourself out a lot by by going super slow and trying to get everything exact. And then the process then um, stops becoming fun. So. Uh, remember, we're painting because we 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 sort of. Uh, well, I guess we all paint for different reasons, but um, one of the great reasons, uh, well, one of the great benefits of it is just having a bit of that relaxation and a bit of that uh, in the moment feel. Because I, I find that when I paint, I don't really think of anything else besides what I'm doing, and it's a really relaxing kind of thing to do. So, um, yeah, don't beat yourself up, Gail. And thank you for, for coming along. So um, here's a couple of quick little landscapes that I did as well. These are just some uh, wet and wet landscapes. Don't take very long, maybe 20 minutes or so. And um, what we're going to do, I'm going to switch over to this other bit of paper. Yeah. Hope you guys can see. Um, let me know if the video and the audio is going okay i think it's i think it's going okay um, from the people the people who are around i have my pens here as well just on top um i'll go through just really quickly the um, materials i'm using 100 percent 
uh, cotton watercolor paper. If you have any other type of cotton, uh, any type of watercolor paper, just use that. You'd be completely fine. Um, and to use cotton watercolor paper because the vibrancy just looks a bit better vibrancy wise. And also it's easier to, um, what am I trying to say? Easier to, to kind of layer over the top of other colors. Okay, but use whatever materials, the, the best materials that you have at home. Um, it's more, more important to get in the practice, especially with your drawing. If, you're, if you improve your drawing, everything else, everything else improves. So um, even your, your painting, because painting is almost, I don't know, it's kind of, it, I compare it to drawing because you are drawing with the paintbrush and you're getting in large strokes and also getting in a tone, tonal variations as well. So uh, I, I have a separate sketchbook that I actually uh, keep at home and I've got a uh, pencil and I just sketch, randomly just sketch. It's got a lot of um, terrible sketches in there that I sh don't show anyone, but the practice and just like kind of studying how the light reflects off a certain object, you, you know, or just the curvature of an object or something like that, it really, really helps. Uh, there's a few chats here. I'm still holding all these six pins I'm down uh, Margaret says hey Dar uh, hi Darren Marg from Melbourne hope you're well thanks Margaret yeah I'm um, feeling uh, feeling f a fair bit better these days uh, for those of you who have been watching along in the last past sessions I've not been so uh, well uh, for a few weeks so I'm glad I'm, I'm feeling much better these days and I can uh, resume painting again you know it's a uh, it's a shame. It's really a shame when you can't do something that you enjoy and you love. Um, so, you know, I try to treasure these times, these, uh, uh, yeah, I don't, I, I, I don't certainly don't take them for, for granted. So, um, thank you for, for coming along, Mark and Marta is here as well. How are you going, Marta, Marta, um, Corrado and Another another regular We've got Shinolin Martinez. Hey, doing Shinolin? Good to see you. How you? How's things? And Lindsay, how are you? How are you going, Lindsay? Uh, we and Gail says you made some excellent points. I will try drawing with my pen tonight. Awesome. And and Gail, I'll try to explain it. Uh, explain the drawing a little bit better to help you along. Uh, help you along the way. But don't um, certainly don't uh, worry too much. Okay, we're gonna start with. Uh, simplifying the drawing down first okay but i'll explain that in just a moment make sure that i got the reference up if you need the reference guys it's in um, i've posted the link both to youtube and also on facebook you can go and have a look in the discussion section um, i've pinned a comment up in facebook and i've pinned also a, a comment on on our youtube so click there and you can bring up the actual reference photo download it to your computer and you can have that kind of uh on the side of the screen Really best if you have it on the side of the screen and then watch the video at the same time so you have a, a better indication of what I'm uh, what I'm drawing uh, but even if you don't have the reference picture and you want to just follow along with what I'm doing that's fine too because the good thing is that when I'm drawing with pen it just makes it so much easier when I'm doing just the pure watercolor demonstrations people often um, people often struggle to see what I'm what I'm drawing and I've got to really just push down hard with the pencil all the time uh, Lindsay says, uh, glad to see you looking well. Hi, thanks for asking. Uh, good to hear. And Shinolin says, sketching in pencil first, less of a worry, mistakes with the pen. Yeah, you, you, you can actually go in with the pencil first, guys. So don't, um, I also don't want to pressure you into just, if, if you want to go in with the pen, pencil first, um, sketch with that pencil first. And, I'll, and then what you can do, go over with the pen and then you can rub it out. Okay, throughout the demonstration, um, because the demonstration is going to be available after as well, what you can do is you can re you can rewind the um, video. Um, you, you can rewind the video and then just continue playing it if you if I'm going too quick. I think that might help as well. And also, um, as always, if you have any questions, just ask, just pop a question into the chats. I'd uh, love to hear, uh, you know, some 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 feedback as well if you think that. I could explain something better or if I could uh, go through something in more detail or maybe I'm, I'm going on for too long, just let me know. Um, or if you have just general questions about watercolor, just pop them in the chats. I'm always uh, happy to answer them and I actually like answering them. So uh, I've got a 0.5 pen here. So 0.5 nib 
see that 0 0.5 so it, you, you only I've got a, this is a bit of this is a bit too much I've got six pens here but really you just need one so if you've got a 0 0.5 to a uh, 1.0 pen it'll be fine so I just like to have a lot of them because it gives me some variations in um, line width and when you're drawing with different pens if you have a pen with a thinner nib that makes the object look further back moves the object further back into the background if you've got an object if you've got a pen with a thicker nib like a point like a 1.0 nib or something it moves the object forwards more so it's not 100 necessary i see a lot of artists just use one pen so i still use one pen for most of my my drawings actually okay we've got a few more a few more people um it's also got um yana yana butcher um Buchta, Buchta, Buchta from florida how are you going yana good see you and um is this your first time coming along to one of these sessions if so um leah let me know what you you want to get out of it if you have questions as well while i am drawing so uh, i'm just having a look i think that's it guys i think that's all the the questions um good to see there's a bit of a turnout today i know for some of you it's uh it's, it's very late um just having a quick look. I think we are all good. So let's get started, okay? And, and grab out that pen. Anything from 0.3 up to a 1.0 pen, you'll be completely fine. Okay, this is quite complicated drawing. And I thought I'd take my time with this one and just put it in for one, uh, do just do one scene tonight. Normally I do two. This has got a, there's a lot of things in here, but we're gonna simplify it down, yeah? So I've got the photo right up on the screen. I'll check the chats in a moment because the whole screen's just filled up now. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to look uh, roughly around where the base of the building is. So this is Flinders Station over in Melbourne. It's about it's about maybe a fifteen minute walk from where I am. At the moment uh, iconic uh, train station and buildings. It's got beautiful sort of color. It's always busy down this street. And there's, um, if you follow that road to the left, it goes over a, a bridge over the, the Yarra River. Uh, so it's a lovely sort of place and uh, actually quite a nice place to paint. You can, there's like parks and stuff nearby as well. So a bit of a bit of background of what we're actually painting. So what we want to do is look at the bottom. Where is the bottom of the building? So if we look um, in relation to the middle of the page, so we can divide the page into half. That's pretty simple. Um, and if we divide that half into yet another half, let's say that's around the slightly, yeah, around about half of half, about a quarter of the way through is about where the buildings, the bottom of that building actually um, stops. So just having a look on the screen, probably, um, yeah, a bit less it's like less certainly less than a half so if we're going from here to here probably around here so we can just mark in a little like that little mark there perhaps a little mark here like that and we're just going to draw in a light sort of line going across like this okay just to mark out the base of the buildings okay, very lightly because i'm going to go over the top we're going to get some tram this tram in here on the side as well now I'm, I'm trying to look at what's the easiest thing I can draw as well. Often starting out with these drawings, it's um, a lot of beginners look at it. And even myself, I sort of look at these drawings and I think, oh, geez, these, these references, where do I start? Um, the most obvious thing in here, I think, is the, uh, the, 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 the actual station right in the middle of the scene. And then we've got this tram here as well running through. I think that's quite an iconic sort of section. So we know that um if we if we look at the um middle section of this building it's kind of you can see the dome this large dome right in the center and then below the dome you've got a kind of triangular section and then below you've got this um kind of pillar uh, and, and the pillar sort of left of that triangular section so it's almost like um you know you've got this triangular bit that just runs around about through the center of the page and here Okay, just putting in a few dots like that. Okay, and that will help you to um, just draw it out. You know, like a little triangle like that. 
pretty much about where it is. Now the top of that triangle, it's a little bit higher than the halfway point of the paper. The halfway point of the paper is almost like here. That's how I'm, I'm referencing everything to its location on the sheet of paper. Because that's about, that's our only frame of reference at the moment. And then everything, if we get this in um, somewhat accurately, then everything is going to be drawn in relation to this. Okay, so that's kind of this little circular clock area here on top. A little bit of detail like that. I mean, that can just keep on going and really just depends on how much you want to, to draw, okay, a little bit of it. And then uh, the side of it is just like a pillar that runs all the way down. Um, and then we've got a tram that kind of runs through the, the, entire, um, the entire building. And it almost runs, runs about halfway through. I'm just looking at the height of it, a little bit less than halfway um, between the top of this triangular, the bottom of this triangular bit in the bottom. So, and I'm going to just estimate, estimate where it is, and how how we're going to draw on this tram. Well, firstly, um, look at the look at the shape of the tram, and uh, don't look at it as a tram. Look at it as uh, what could you what could you say it is? It's kind of like a box, like almost like a like a toothpaste box or something like that, right? So you've got this kind of section here, which is a this um, angular bit like that, okay? Draw that in like that, okay? And then I'm gonna go in the edges and try to bring this all the way back. This, stop it. Where are we gonna stop it? It about goes quite far into the scene actually. Say round about here. Move it down. And also, we can change this. So don't feel like if it's uh, certainly not, yeah, if it's not completely accurate, you can still change it. Okay, so you get that little, it's this indication here of this box shape, like that, okay, and there you go. I think that looks all right for the time being. So once you've got that box shape, you kind of look for other things on the tram. So you might think, hey, it's actually a section on top here that's another shape that runs like this here. It's like the, you know, like those, the air conditioning ducts, uh, the compressor and stuff like that on top of the top of the tram there. And then we've got a little bit more detail. So you might think, hey, this is the little area that has the actual what the the number of the tram and where it's going kind of thing. And then we've got a section here where we've got the windscreen as well that just having a look at it and then we've got the windscreen for this side here there uh and it cuts bisects the the tram about halfway the bottom of that windscreen is about halfway through the entire tram like that so that's why i'm kind of measuring it up like that and then the bottom bit of it it's it just comes down it's almost like straight this like and then we've got a couple of lights maybe here at the bottom more complicated than that, obviously, but we want to simplify it down. Another line here coming up towards the side. Um, this could be like, a, it looks like just part of the tram advertisement or something like that. Um, fantastic. So going through, what else can we put in here? We've got like these doors here on the side. So um, put that in. And I'm drawing the stuff in front first because it just makes it a lot easier for when we go into the background we don't have to worry about cutting over the top of the tram if you do if you draw these buildings first what's going to happen is that you're going to draw the tram over the top of them and you're going to have lines interfering which is uh i wouldn't say it's a wrong thing but it's stylistically i prefer to just have the lines look a little bit cleaner so it's up to you you can still draw in that building first um, i just prefer to do it this way um the doors as well they have a kind of you know a lot of darkness in here but you've got these two sections this there one there one there okay just a little bit of shading in there coming down hit the ground uh, not the ground but the base of it here having a look at roughly where it would hit and here okay good 
there and then um, underneath the tram it's basically just all darkness here so i'm not going to really um try to put too much detail in there i'll get that in with the watercolors perhaps the black pen actually would be good as well we get in a bit of detail with the, i have another black uh, felt tip pen um what can we do with this tram let's divide it into half again so um, from here to here, roughly around the halfway point, somewhere like this. And then I know that we have another door here, okay? And this actually, this line goes all the way down the back. All the way down, let's just carry this. Like that, and there's another door here, right in the center, roughly around the center point there. Um, bring that down, this, this as well. Okay, good. And again, we've got a few windows that we can just scribble in like that. A bit of darkness around the doorway. Uh, there's a little segment here on the tram as well, kind of here. Okay, and then there is there's some windows basically. Just, um, just draw square bits and pieces like that in here. Okay, there, there. Another bit here, for example, like that. Um, here there's a, a really dark sort of line separation of the tram which i'll get in a bit later with another color uh, not another color but a, a thicker marker okay drawing that in um there again separate this out into two from this darker line to that line we're going to draw in another door here okay there's something quick like that okay and you know there's a few more windows this is a lot more you know detailed than you really need to to go um, normally i just i really do this a lot quicker and then at the base of course we have um, a fair bit of darkness on the on the ground um it just carries all the way throughout the the back of the tram which i'm going to get probably get this in with a, a darker darker liner in just a moment um, but I just wanted to get in, uh, you know, the basics first of that tram. Okay, and then we can, uh, of course, detail more later. So let's keep working on this building here in the background. And I know we kind of come down here. We've got these two pillars. So we've got one pillar here. Uh, this one here kind of starts around here. And then it comes down, finishes there. Uh, what else do we have? We've got these windows which again if we if we separate out there's actually a bit of darkness if you look and this sort of circle bit semicircle sort of thing there and then there's a bit of line circling around like that that's the entrance of the station um but if we cut from here we measure from here to here just underneath that <clears throat> that triangle a bit cut it around about here halfway this is about the point where the windows begin. Looking at that line just underneath the windows, and that looks about halfway between there and there. So that's kind of how I'm referencing everything. We'll cut this into half again, like that, and that will make it easy for us to then get in these four sort of uh, darker windows. This, okay. That, so four windows there. We've got a bit of darkness in there. Um, and then we're going to put in this got the, the dome up the top as well but let before we do that i think i'll just get in a bit more of the uh, pillars and things running around the side um, actually a, a section just define this bit first like that okay there's a section that kind of runs up because this same here that is uh Kind of a spherical thing here on top like that. Good. And kind of around the same height of that. And um, some more of these little pillars. Uh, let's see how can we simplify this down even further. We've got a section here that just runs down the page like that. It's the ground. We've drawn in the ground a bit already over there. We're going to get in... Um, this section as well, it's almost like the last, just the last bit of the station around the edge 
um, the left hand side and then of course like underneath um, here we've got this uh, section of the uh, light and we've got darkness directly under so looking at this from the top to the bottom as well we can separate this into the halfway point and we can begin this like kind of cover this shade which is running directly above directly across that building there there we go just get this in and this is going to be a pretty a really light kind of area so there's not going to be too much uh darkness over on the top of this uh, section here it's really underneath that we're going to get a lot of darkness and bits and pieces running through um that just drawing in some of these arches and things with some of the what do you call them patterns and things in here it's really quite complex and you can spend a whole day just drawing these in um but i'm really trying to avoid that okay. so kind of mimics this side actually yeah I'm going to use a darker pen because sort of nib in a moment to get in some more details for the the last bit but i'll just uh, do this to show you so if you've got a if you have a larger nib pen this one is like a four millimeter one three millimeter and a, a two millimeter one so this is just a pen that i've got um flat edged pen which i can just go in and do this sort of thing here to get in a little contrast on the edges of certain areas i mean we can do it as well for the areas of the tram for example maybe like this area that could be you know a bit darker like that um the front of the tram i'm really not going to do it all too much actually to the tram because i'm hoping i can get in a lot of this darkness with the uh watercolors after but you know just working on it a little bit like this is kind of fun and helps guide your watercolors later as well. So you can see that window is like almost partially open or something there. You can see, um, you know, you can make more obvious the segmentation on the tram, like this, the door areas here, that, um, this area here, well, it's darkness there. Underneath the tram, you can also work on getting in a bit of that color a bit of that darkness underneath underneath the uh, tram so again it's a preference thing certainly you can do it later with the watercolors darker one okay Maybe we use this bigger one here. See, it's just all dark. That simplified. Yeah. But I, I don't want to get it all in. I want to wait for later so we can get in some watercolors and to darken up areas. But uh, yeah, I did say that before. But you see, some of these windows, you can also just go color in some of those windows like that and the, these areas to kind of get in a bit of contrast already that, it's quite satisfying and like for me it kind of keeps me it keeps me excited and continue uh, to continue on when I start seeing something begin to emerge um it's kind of like a little bit of little bit of reinforcement because when you're starting and it doesn't look like anything it's uh that's the trickiest part it really is the trickiest part to think to yourself geez is it working out? Should I continue on? Have to have to push through it, and um, just have faith. Just have faith that it's gonna turn out looking like something. I've now realised that there is some more details on the tram. There's actually a you know there's this thing here, basically a little prong on top of the tram that connects to the uh, the, the power grid. Basically, draws electricity from the lines up the top. I'll just draw that in very quickly there. What's we got? We've got a little. You see, they're kind of like something up there. I'm gonna probably shouldn't have drawn them in. 
There is a section on the back here as well, this um, little bit of darkness like this. Got a bit of the edge exposed there. Yeah. Okay. Something there on the back. Um, and I like to outline these trams a fair bit. Well, it's, I mean, like objects in the front. I like to outline them a little bit so that they move forwards a, a little more. You can see if I'm creating a thicker line. That's when I was what I was talking about before when I like to use different sized nibs for uh, the drawings, so it can help to bring forward areas, uh, push back others, um, that kind of thing. It does really help. Otherwise, you have the the risk of things kind of just blending together. Okay, bit of that in the background there. I'm going to go have a look at the chats. Let me check the chats for a bit. Um, okay. Great. Yana says, um, I'm up late and caught my first lesson. Stick. Um, let me know if you need any help, guys. Is Roman Romana Romana Inskip In In Inskip from Ohio? Are you going, Romana? Uh, Romana. Look as well. Gail's saying another problem I have is where to start on the paper. Yeah, uh, I hope that kind of helped out a bit when I was going through how I was drawing and where I began. Um, uh, you know, picked out the most easiest. You know, what what I thought was the most easiest place to start off with, just the bottom of the buildings, and then just worked on on the rest of it, getting the rest of the buildings in, looking at a center point, trying to find the big shapes, drawing the big shapes first, and then separating out the big shapes and putting in the smaller shapes into the big shapes. So that is the only way that I know how to do it um, that makes it easy, uh, easier anyway. It takes time before it, uh, before it, uh, it it's uh, a bit more second nature to you, but um, it kind of stops you from looking at objects as objects and more like shapes. And then if you can reduce things down to shapes, then you suddenly can draw what you uh, want to draw. Otherwise, uh, just looking at a, a a very complex thing that's emerging in front of you. So anyway, that's the tram. Um, I'm going to get back to the, the drawing. But again, if you have any questions, just drop them in the, in the chats. So we've got this... Um, top section here and I'm going to start working on this right hand side here as well. We'll put in this section here which is basically a kind of a right hand side of the um, right hand side of this uh, area. And that's going to have like a bit of this railing and stuff there. Um, bit here this is kind of more railing maybe. It comes down to another area like that. That comes down here, kind of like a side of the building, like that. There, um, bit here, there. Okay, and again, we've got all this stuff running through here, like edges, darker sort of sections. Just simplify. It's about the only way you can look at how you can how can you draw that shape in in the most simplified way. It's not your only chance to get in detail. Once you go in with the watercolors, we can add in some more detail later. So uh, the drawing just forms the kind of backbone to to everything. So uh, you, yeah, you still got still got an opportunity later on. Um, so we've got that one in. Let's go ahead and and do a a bit of a line. You know, we, we know that the buildings end roughly here. Yeah, I'll just pop in a little dot to give it a mark there. And then I'm just going to draw a faint kind of line going all the way down that. Okay, rough edged sort of line. It's not completely uh, perfect or anything like that, but we don't need to really worry about that. Uh, so here we've got a, it's a kind of a dome shape, of something there. There we go. And now I think it may be time for us to just do the dome. Let's just, let's just get it over with. 
all these architectural components here, you see the kind of these rounder object sections and a bit of that couple more over this side. That um again they're not perfect. Close enough. Do more of these lines. Swap swap pens feel well. Kind of areas there that separate out the there. Good. And then okay. Um looking good. Now let's get on this dome. Now we want to look where do we want to kind of end the dome? Hmm. About about um almost like a quarter of the way through the page. Like if we look at not the more the top of the actual sphere, and then we've got this section on the top that pokes out, but just on the top of the the, the semi semi sphere, I would say that that's almost like a quarter of the page up. So again, we can look at here to here. That's about half half of the way through the page, and um, about half of that would end the dome roughly around here. So just as a really like rough guide we can go in and do something like that and you know with the pen another little trick i do is kind of put the pen on the side and, and it grazes the paper so that it doesn't have um, too much of a, a mark on the on the paper just yet if you're not sure um, so you can, going light and then using the side of that pen it's going to help you out and we've got these kind of sections that one of them comes straight up like this the other one's like coming out like this here We've got another one kind of coming out here, uh, coming out like here, there, there, and then we got another one coming out like coming past this one here, here, that a bit over on that side just as well. Um, there we go, and we've got the dome in, got the dome in. So now we can just, uh, again, reinforce some of these areas a bit more. Uh, again, just kind of um, reshape it, make it look more, more accurate or whatever. There, there. What am I doing? Here we go. These these areas are kind of like little ornamental bits of the, the dome. You can see kind of the ornamental bits of black black um, metal and frames like kind of going around it. The base. We don't have to draw that in. Just drawn a few little bits of squiggliness in there to imply that. I want to draw this bottom part out a bit better as well. This there. Okay. Let's take, you know, we've even got, look at that, there's like a little circular thing in there. And I don't know what this is for, actually. Uh, if anyone knows, <laughs> I have no idea. I'm just looking at them as shapes. Um, there we go. And you also notice that there are uh, sections. It's quite... You know, there's, there's all this stuff going through it. Um, apart from these main segments here, there's also some other segments and bits and pieces in there. So again, that's really up to you as to how much detail you want to put in here. I would, I, I would try, I would, um, I would say just be careful with this part because you can overdo it um, and you can over detail as well. Okay, so we know that we've got it sort of finishes here, and then we've got this uh, top part. Let me just get that in. This kind of oh, app top, isn't it? Okay, 
Um, we've done that. We've done that part. So let's go ahead and work on this section. Um, these are just, you know, again, simplification is uh, what you want to do here. Well, don't want to spend all too long on this area. Just putting in some of this section of the building. Straight over. Opening like that down the side. Um, coming down. A little bit of one that comes out the top like that. You know, I'm not trying to, I'm not aiming for accuracy here. I'm just looking for basic shapes. Okay. Yeah. Here, even half, halfway through, from here to here, um, halfway through, we've got this kind of um, repeat of this one here. This uh, structure, this tower. Deep in behind there, you can't see it all too well. And that down to the ground like this. There. Good. Um, this is this sticks out. This clock tower as well. Right around the back here, clock tower. So we wanna we wanna place that clock tower around this last section. So we again divide this, divide it into half, divide this into roughly half again. Okay, and uh, we know that there's like a real dark spot right here. Yeah, you can see it's just um, a bit of shade or what have you there. And there's even a even a dome shape up the top like that. It doesn't matter. Just want to make sure that it's in the right general position, and then we can go ahead and do this little clock tower, and we'll finish it. But now we can look at we might think where does the clock tower finish? I mean, you don't want to do it. You want to make it go up there. It's going to look weird. So we can look at something else in the scene that's roughly around the same height as the clock tower. Um, the only thing I can see that's close to that is maybe this tower here which finishes uh, actually a little bit higher than the tower. So it's almost like the tower finishes about almost halfway through this one. So let's put a little, a little mark here or something. And this is the top of it, by the way. So come down, let's go draw it in um, here. It's a rectangle. Yeah, it's a rectangle like that. Rectangle. It's got an edge to it as well. That. Mm. Segment on the side. We'll mark the top part like here. Dome. Top dome. Australian top there. And uh have angular bit like that. And these kind of two round bits on the side. You see them just these kind of two rounded sections there. Like that. And then we've got the you know the clock face here. Um, there's a pattern to it as well. If you look at it, it's kind of like these horizontal lines just running across the tower like that. Even a, I think that's like a wind, uh, not a window, like the, the bell tower at the top there. The bell could be in there. Three little tiny windows. You know, <laughs> again, it's not um, no big deal. Yeah, we're just uh, looking at just trying to break that in terms of like my mental process. That's what I'm thinking when I'm drawing this in. So I hope that kind of helps. You know what's uh, what's going through my head. Um, good. What else have we got in here? We got that. We got this thing. I mean, I've actually left too much space in between, but that's okay. Uh, here we go. We can just put in a few vertical lines running down the page. Some of these sections here. Uh, we've also got um, darker sections underneath here, so they kind of start here and then finish down the bottom. That, so darker, yeah, it's underneath the building, shadow and stuff. Little little darkness there won't hurt. You know, here we can put in some, you know, even on this side of the building where it's pretty dark. Why not? Let's color that in a little and you know don't feel like you you know you can use any type of pen for this as well it just takes longer if you're using other 
other kinds of pens. I I use this one, which is basically a uh, felt um, felt uh, it's permanent part of the etcher set that was given to me a while back. Um, and we got the windows. Jeez, these windows they drove me crazy last time when I was doing the last demonstration. This one, just a little bit of that one. Yeah, when uh, um, make sure you leave some details for later. Yeah, don't um, attempt to draw and color everything in because we can only get two tones really the really light tone and then the just the really dark tone like this. So, we need the stuff in the middle as well. We notice there's even uh, you know, there's a, there's a large shadow that just runs across this building see it like that and i think i might get that in with the watercolors actually i don't want to i don't want to do that with the pen i don't um don't trust myself <laughs> i think it's just gonna make everything look too dark so here's uh here's my little take here of these windows okay just draw in a few of these um vertical lines just simplify them down yeah, they're so far back in the distance um, another thing as well, you, if you make these lines really uh, basic and um, just simplified like this, it helps to push that push that area back into the distance. You don't want this area to be too detailed because it's uh, yeah, essentially it's it's uh, stuff that's in the background. So almost almost done in that section. Um, uh, we've also got shadows running across the ground. There's quite a bit of quite a bit going on in here, actually. Let me just get in a line as well running across the page, like a tram line. I help expect it. Okay, good. More perspective, so maybe here. So what you can do, pick, kind of pick an area off in the distance, point maybe here, then make sure all the lines kind of join up with that area, that point. Pick. Help. Perspective. That. Okay. Good. Uh, I want to get in some cars or something. Let's turn this one into a car. Yeah. Um, I'll put in a the back side of the car like that. Maybe it's kind of driving um that way. Let's put in the side of this and um. Also looking at that tram and seeing uh, as as well, you know the the approximate size of that car to make sure it's not too big, not too small. Okay, and let's put a bit of shadow underneath like that. Um, the perspective is not perfect, but I think we can get away with it. I can just lower that tram down a, a little bit, but it's okay. I think we can we can definitely get away with it. Uh, what else can we do? We can, of course, put in um, some people. We could put in a person here, head of a person, and then some shoulders like this. Uh, this person is kind of like in the foreground. Um, let's get a leg here, and then a leg moving across the back like that. Your person just kind of like crossing the um, crossing the street like that. Okay, very basic figure um okay what else do we have we might have uh again i'm gonna leave the shadows for a bit later okay uh we might have another figure here we have smaller figures as well uh but let's just think before we do this maybe another car or something in the distance like this quickly just scribble something in there in the background and then also, there there are actually some trees and things. So go ahead and scratch a bit in like that. Um, bigger.
walking maybe towards that right hand side. I've certainly put this figure a lot closer to the um a lot closer to the scene in front of the scene that I wanted. But okay, a bit of a figure there. Um maybe one here. Head shoulder. Once again, a little bit closer. Okay, keep going towards that back area, and this this figure's a little closer to us as well. Here, okay, um, like that. Someone just we can also have someone just waiting here. Person just standing like this as well. <laughs> In the middle of the road okay um, let's have a look um, 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 I think we're looking we're looking good let's continue on to that left hand that, uh, that left hand side okay are we how are we traveling along it's 649 we can be done with this one uh, the drawing fairly soon guys uh, I hope you're all keeping up Hope you're keeping up okay. Uh, do let me know how you are traveling along in the chats. We're going to get this last section out of the way and then we're going to go straight into the painting. Um, I don't think I'll do all too much in drawing, any more drawing in here. Uh, I think we've got a good amount of, of uh, detail. Keep it sketchy as well. So uh, we do have on this left-hand side uh, a tram that comes in, and again, the size of the tram, um, we can judge that by comparing it to this one here. So we can have one, you can have it kind of come in like this. It's got the same, roughly the same height or slightly taller than that one because it's closer to us. Comes in here, and then it's sort of just a box. Just think of it as a box kind of coming in like that. Um, a bit of detail like that here. They're, they're, they look like they're going to crash into each other. Passed right by each other. Um, separate that into the halfway point. We've got a window here. There. We've got a window here. Darker kind of window there. And we've got this section here, which is like passenger's window there. There. Plastic. Um, little driver's side mirror. That bits and bobs bottom of the tram, bits and pieces. Of course, we have this dark shadow running beneath the the uh, tram. So I'm going to actually put it in Something like that. Really basic, yeah. Of course, we've got some of the windows and stuff to color in. Some small details. This. Yeah. So, put something in there. Some cars. That's a uh, side of a car just sort of sticking out here. One of it's here. This is a wheel. car that that's another car here in the distance a little bit of coloring in for the window this darkness in that window a bit of darkness underneath the car here as well okay car that's a car for you it's also stuff here this is a um sign something like that. i think this photo was taken quite recently um it's still there's still some construction works things going on uh, of course we have people perhaps in the far distance and maybe just standing around waiting for the traffic lights to change um cars um 
going through as well that we can just draw in a bit of a little bit of detail like that side of a car just turning or something behind these pedestrians car <clears throat> another car here top of the car this there the side there 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 okay overlapping shapes Way to do it this car probably overlap with that one too much okay that's a bit much but uh we'll make do we will make do with it okay and a few you know i think just having some figures and bits and pieces in here really does help and there is a car here as well that's just like you can see the wheel there it's just very far back but i'll, I'll imply that car just there mm. underneath that part building and of course some figures some little figures you know, we're working quite small here it's uh, tricky to draw the distance too much but that should do the trick now we've got this tram in i can now finish off this um, roof area that connect up that roof there there that okay there uh really the rest of it we've just got a whole bunch of darkness in here there's not uh, too much detail that the photo uh, has captured in this scene um i think so safe to say i can probably just try some of this dark in here and uh, it looks pretty dark at the moment because there's nothing to compare it to but actually I that I have to go over this again uh, afterwards because it's it's actually not as dark as the watercolors. But I'm having a look, just seeing how we're turning out. Okay, good, good, good. Um, all this stuff here is also going to be in the dark. Okay, but just a little bit of that, I think. Another thing you can do is catch another technique. Moving that pen across the paper in one direction like this. And that will look like that part of the building is darker. So another technique that you can use, I suppose, essentially. Okay. And already that bit part of the building looks a little darker, right? Just something, just a little something to, to uh, try out. Okay. Um, like I said, I do like prefer doing a lot of the shadows and stuff in watercolor but uh it is another certainly like another option you have in areas you can do it here as well that um looking good now what are we missing oh these buildings in the background I'm thinking this is there's something very obvious missing in here to use this thinner pen and uh, get in some very basic structures in the background now if you don't want to put too much detail in here because it's going to um start to compete with this I realize i've also forgotten to draw in this part of the, the uh, building here around the same height as that but, okay quick Lag there. Okay, should do should do the trick. Okay, um, hang up through the back. I might actually use a smaller nib pen. I've got a point. I think I'll use the point two. Kind of this larger. This goes all the way back. Kind of around here. Quite a lot of details. Don't need to um, do them too much because we are going to just imply the silhouette of those buildings in the background. And this is a hotel. This building in the front here. 
some little details. Look at that, I'm just built, breaking it down into like squares. I'm just looking at it and thinking, what's the simplest way that I can draw this one in? Um, Shadow here. Yeah, bit of shadow. Also here. Yeah. That. Okay. Might also, um, while I'm here, just hatch to be spilling away. Yep. Very light. Okay. That. But that will um, give it a little detail and also help to darken it. Oh, I've got this little building to the mine. I really shoot myself in the foot sometimes by picking these by picking these um tricky reference photos, but it's it's a good thing to you guys because I tell you what, if you can draw something like this, you can practice in drawing something like this, when you when you're given something like a uh, like a little house or something to draw, no problems. Because uh, certainly, it's certainly challenging. Very challenging. There's a lot of lot going on here. I think these are some cranes. Up that um, and again, we'll hatch. A bit of hatching away. Um, what directions should we put? A couple of vertical lines right. And a couple more here, and then we're this building ends roughly about here, not all the way up to that building, but like around there, there, the rough size of it, right, like that. And then we've got a bit of this building on the side. Just, just got a little back of that tram. Let me try to increase So if you ever get a if you ever make a mistake with the size of buildings and things, look at that. I see I estimated it incorrectly. Just draw where it uh, yeah, just just draw where the, the lines should be and um act as if you didn't uh yeah, just act as if those original lines don't exist. Because the worst thing you can do is to start scribbling away and um yeah, just basically start scribbling away. And then all of a sudden you've got this mess. Um, this is the few little windows, more than a few, a few hundred windows, drawing a few hundred. Windows. Um, I'm just scribbling them in, just little dots. And the less detail you put in them, probably the better, because they are so far back. This is a this is a shortcut. I actually like this other one, but a bit more varied. And matching with this in this section. Hatch the one in the right direction. I actually hatch this one. Yeah. This will bring out this tram more. Actually, go around the edge of that tram. It's better. The tram. Draw it out. It comes forwards. Okay. Good. Um. I will add in uh, this shadow underneath the tram, actually, with the, this. 
Now that everything's in, I can be a bit better as to where to start going into the, this area. I think I'll put the rest of it in watercolors after. Okay. Okay, guys. Um, it was a bit of work. It was a bit of work, but um, I hope you are carrying on okay and uh, still with me. You're still with me. And if it doesn't look uh, too much like what you're painting, make sure you continue on because um, there's so many things you can do that I'll show you with the paint that you can just um, add in more darkness or add in figures over the top bits and pieces so that it um, so that it looks a little bit better or in some more details not your know, last opportunity to, to get in those details I say yeah, put in a bit of an edge for this one as well yeah but I mean if you're watching along at home and you want to add some more details by all means just um, as much as you want <laughs> okay it's 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 really up to you how you approach this and when you think you've got enough detail or you don't have enough, that kind of thing. Uh, another thing, you know, I, I kind of feel there should be something here. I don't know about what you think. What do you think, guys? Uh, let me know what you think with the drawing. Um, should I put another figure here? No. Cover up, it would cover up these, uh, some of these figures, but perhaps one here walking in that direction i just feel that there's something missing from that part or another thing i could do is just leave it to the tram um leave that shadows coming from the tram and that that can be like the the feature the feature of this uh seeing the shadow coming across there um i could add another figure here as well so many options so many options Yana uh, says, thank you so much for this lovely lesson. Good night. Good night, Yana. Uh, and uh, Champ for staying up for so long. Uh, this still will be available afterwards. So if you yeah, if you want to watch it after, just uh, rewind the video and have a look. Margaret says, amazing uh, drawing, Darren. I have to practice this one. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is a, this is a, a, a tricky warm-up one, isn't it? There's a, so much in here. Um, really a lot in here, but... The practice that you get with it, this because of there's just so many shapes, you know, the square circles, everything's in everything in here, and so the the practice that you're getting in here really uh, quite a lot, rather than just drawing one house or something like that. I don't actually now just realize the extra side of this building. Get in quickly. Um, let me have a look how uh, everyone else is doing. Um, just having a quick look. Chats, uh, YouTube, just seeing where I'm up to. But I get a bit zoned out. I don't know about you guys, but I, when I'm drawing, it actually took me a bit of time to learn how to talk and to draw and, and paint at the same time. But yeah, I kind of zone out when I'm doing it. Now I'm just trying to like focus my mind to reading again. Um, great. Oh, Valerie's here. How are you doing, uh, Valerie? And uh, she says, just waking up here. Hope you've got your coffee ready this morning, Valerie, because uh, it's a, it must be, must be pretty tired. Um, good to see you, Yvonne. Um, oh, Yvonne's here. So y Yvonne's actually, uh, morning Yvonne, she's, she's actually the one um, who uh, suggested to do this uh, scene. So good to see you here. Yvonne, I hope you like. I hope you like how it's turned out. I hope you like how the the drawings turned out, Yvonne. Um, I'm just having a look. Who else is here? I think. I think we're pretty much. That's that's pretty much it, guys. Um, usually, usually V's here as well. Maybe V's watching. I don't know, but um, I think we we may continue along. Do you have any more questions? Let me know if you if you are struggling to, on on drawing any part of this, or you need a little bit more help. 
um, I can answer your questions now before we get into the actual um, the actual painting side of of things. I was kind of at the point where I was just deciding what to do with putting a figure here or or not. Um, and why am I so indecisive at this at this point? <laughs> Look, um, how about about because if we have a shadow running down here i don't kind of want that to interrupt too much what's going on i also want the tram to be right in the front we put a figure here and maybe i can recover a bit of that white for later um, that could be a, a thing as well so like if i just put a, a larger figure maybe coming through here just get the legs in the body and the legs so that can be like the head then maybe uh, the body here like this and then we can have one leg coming out here and then the other leg um, that back like that. Okay. And then we've got a little more balance, I feel now. There's a little more balance going on. So, um, fantastic. Uh, and um, Yvonne says, I think, leaving it, I think leaving it for the tram would be better. It sounds easier. Yeah, look, we kind of got in both. We got the tram, and then we got the, the figure in. So we've got... Because th th there was just... You know, sometimes you've got areas that are just completely um, flat, and there's nothing in there. There's something... I need to put something in there just to disrupt that. But at the same time, this can be an area of focus. I just... I didn't want this to be an area of, of too much focus. I think this figure in there would, would help. So, yeah. Fantastic. Um... And uh, a quick look at the chats. I may actually get a, get some water. Um, I'll give you guys a little bit of time to uh, yeah, just to catch up and uh, continue. Uh, certainly continue on um, as well. Oh, <laughs> he's. Thanks for the coffees. Thank you so much for the coffees, uh, Valerie. Jesus. <laughs> wow. Um, I don't know what to say. Really, really appreciate it. <laughs> I, was only, I was only kidding. <laughs> I was actually mean, I was meaning actual real, a real coffee, like something to drink in the morning. Jeez. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm going to go grab a drink of water. Okay, uh, so I am back now, uh, and for, yeah, I guess any, uh, I've been starting to take, been starting to take a few requests, a few more requests coming through as well in terms of like what, uh, what to paint, what to draw, um, so if anyone has ideas, uh, message them through to me, especially, uh, but you know, the um, some of my patrons have been sending through just requests of what they they want to see. So I'll, I'll do my best to to base um, some of these uh, some of these demonstrations on what you what you'd like as well. And uh, the good thing for me is that it ends up um, for me I, I end up painting and drawing subjects that are a little bit different um, than what I normally do. So I think it's also good for uh, good on both sides. So. Um, righto, uh, we will continue on and, uh, we'll continue on. So I hope everyone is up to speed. I hope everyone is up to speed. Um, do let me know if you need any more help. Uh, Yvonne says, I do like it. It does provide balance. 
yeah, it's just something there. I felt like even a car would be good. Um, Lindsay says, Lindsay says, uh, power lines as directional. Uh, power lines as directional. Yes, uh, that's a good, yeah, that's a good thing as well. So, um, I have seen this used by other artists where they'll use these uh, power lines. So you know how on the ground here we drew a few little lines for the um, the perspective. That we can also do the same thing uh, for these power lines. So I, I actually think we can have a few maybe running through like here. This a little bit like that. We can also wait till later and get some in. Um, with some white uh, gouache, I think a bit of white gouache, and then maybe with the with the brush would be good. I'll leave that, but you can also do it with a pen. Uh, I'm gonna shut all these pens and put them away. I will grab my grab my um, pull it out side. I hope you guys can see. Okay, I'm just gonna move the. Uh, Right. So you can see what I'm doing. Um. <laughs> uh, thanks, Valerie. Uh, okay. Um, so let's start off. And as always, I like to go in with the warm colors first. So if you uh, grab some, switch this around, sorry. So, um, this is a new palette I got lately. It really helps uh, my mixing. I've got some uh, quinacridone burnt orange here. It's a very nice granulating sort of uh, orange. And, um, Just have a just bring up the the reference so I can have a look. Check the chats in just a moment. Got a bit of this Conacridone burnt orange, and it's great because um, it kind of granulates, and it's not as vibrant as say a full kind of orange. I do have a bit of of this other color as well, which is a bit of yellow ochre here on the edge. Let me just have a quick look. I'll minimize some of these windows down so I can have the chats up hopefully on the. Uh, Hopefully on the, the side as well. Um, Stephanie, Stephanie Monique, Stephanie Monique, Monique says, I have the hardest time with perspective. Perspective is tricky and um, takes a lot of time to get your head around it. And one of the things as well, speaking of heads, is that you want to make sure, because this is a flat surface, um, the ground is completely flat, the heads of the figures all line up. Okay. You look at them, they're all roughly around the horizon line. They may be, you know, plus or minus a bit here or there. That will imply a flat surface, a flat area. Um, let's put in a bit of this yellow in here as well. Yeah, top like that. Edges here. And really, we just want to get in a almost like a, a same uniform color across all of this, a very light wash. And in terms of the, the, the consistency, I would say 90% water and 10% paint. So a lot of it just predominantly water go through. Even with some of these, this building here in the background, it's a creamy sort of color. I'm using some of this buff titanium color, which is great. Above titanium, I stick before just getting in kind of like an off white color. Don't worry about details just yet, guys. All, all you want to do is add in a little bit of light through here. I think that's going to be pretty much the it's going to be pretty much the um, untouched later I've just put a little little darkness underneath in here as well kind of, uh, it's a bit more vibrant than that it's not orange but in here 
there. Some more colors. Make sure you, you blend these together as well. It's not all just one color. Uh, they, they kind of mix and mingle around in the background like that. Um, Stephan, uh, Stephanie says, great tip. I remember that. Thank you. And yes, you got my name right. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, is it German? It sounds like uh, your last name is could be German, so I was thinking, I was trying to pronounce it that way. Okay. And we go ahead and just uh, pull that, that side in. Actually, the top of this roof is uh, there's a bit of warmth running through there. I'll add in a bit of that. I'm going to swap to another another uh, pen. I'm glad I'm not sneezing or anything at the moment because I've got hay fever and um, started to get pretty full on over here in Melbourne. So color there, there, there. Um, I might just mix up a bit of ultramarine on the side, bit of ultra, uh, a bit of uh, burnt umber as well. Yeah, and I'll drop in some of that in the shadow, get in the shadow, while the paint's still wet as well, so that you can get a bit of that effect in there. And let's get in some of the other sections here. That light, a bit of warmth here in the back as well. There. And of course, a bit of warmth for this top tower here. Back section. Okay. Let's put a bit of green. I have this really cool color called Undersea Green recently that I bought, and it's uh, it is amazing. Surprisingly, I, I didn't think it would be something that I'd like. I mean, I don't use greens all that much, but this is a granulating green, and it separates out to this. Weird golden green color and uh, bluish tinge as well, which is uh, amazing. Let's put in a bit of coolness uh, in the top of this section here of the dome. That in a bit there, and especially the this area is still slightly wet, so it's good to just mix it together that well uh, we have a bit of color on top of the dome as well just a bit drop in a bit like that let's do it for this side too a bit of blue in there um bit here well bit here just any you kind of look at the colors in terms of just the, the general tone uh sorry the, the general hue whether it's like cool or warm i think that's the simplest way to, to do this. Okay, and while you can as well, I'd just like to um, drop in little bits of cool areas in here, you know, because we're gonna actually do, I'm gonna get some sharper shadows through here anyway, but just some coolness uh, running through here is a good way to get some softer shadows running into this uh, section well um okay even some of the buildings you can see here in the background okay but i'll leave uh, a fair bit of this actually for later well um let's get in a bit of this tram i will use another cool mix it's kind of like an ultramarine mix um yeah, just a slight wash of ultramarine and a bit of that brown here, that side. And I've got some, this tram looks purple to me. And purple's one of my favorite colors. I'm gonna use that. This is a bit of, what is it? It's a bit of um, imperial purple. Put that in. Put that I'll leave, leave some of the windows perhaps. Right door. Showing a few more bits and pieces like this here. Um, a 
just keep it pretty soft, nice and sort of soft and light um, in that section. Okay. Just want to get in a really quick wash. That's all. Okay, and then on top of that, you might want to add in a bit of darker color or something. Some sections just to give it a bit of variation, not too necessary. Um, good. And I'll work my way into the ground now. Let's use a larger brush. I've got a number 10, a number 10 brush. And Stephanie's asking, how do I keep colors vibrant and not mud? Um, I tend to, if especially when we're talking about really warm colors in here, so the yellows, um, it's, it's, I like to pick them almost straight off the palette, do a little mixing on the palette, um, just to make sure the consistency the mixing I do on the palette is mainly to get the consistency um, right and whether it's kind of vibrant or more dull. So make sure before you even pop it on there, um, you know, your, your brushes are clean, your water's clean, when you, especially when you're dealing with warmer colors, they can turn to green or just mud very, very easily as well. So I hope that that kind of helps. So if you're using single pigment paints, that works well too. Um, but we'll go into the, the, the ground now. I've got all this warm color here left over and we can just go ahead and just drop some of this in the ground and I'm going to cut around some of the figures and bits and pieces. I've got also some white as well that I'm going to drop in here. Just cut around some of these figures in here and uh, there. Okay, keep it. Nice and quick. I, I think I've been, I think I've been painting a bit slowly for this one. Normally, approach it a bit faster. So sometimes I speed things up. Otherwise, everything looks kind of too stuck on. If you think up if you think about things too much. Okay. That's it for the ground. I mean, I don't think there's anything else I really want to drop in here. They can sometimes put in a bit of this little darker color in the ground like that, um, especially down the foreground, but I'm not too worried about that. Um, the buildings and things, we can start putting in a little bit of a color into the buildings. So uh, it's just the remainder ones, really. I've got a bit of white, just going to add that on again with the yellow. This is a titanium white here, and I'm just going to cut around there and pop that in there and there, like that, there, that. And just a bit of color. These two buildings here, of course, are kind of a, a muted down blue. And I can just put in a bit of this because I don't want that to also um, detract from the rest of the scene. If we put too much vibrant colors, and something you, 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 you know, as, as a beginner, if you're just learning now, you learn over time. If you put too many vibrant colors and things in the background, it will actually distract the viewer because they'll just be looking into the background half the time. Okay, now I've, last step, this is a cerulean blue and cerulean blue is a very nice sort of, um, it's like a, almost like a greenish sort of blue, almost tending towards turquoise. I'm gonna put in some of this, through the sky um, and just to get a nice consistent wash. If it goes over the buildings, don't worry too much as well. Just paint over the top of some areas and just aim at getting a consistent wash through the scene. If you get a bit of white um, as well on the buildings, just leave it in. See, look at that, just a tiny bit of white there and there. It's actually a good thing. Looks more interesting. Move this around, move that water around. White section like this here. Yeah. Go around this side as well. I think these buildings are slightly too vibrant, these yellow ones, but we can always just mute them down a little bit later. That's what I meant by uh, saturation, color saturation and vibrancy. Something that you want to keep in mind and control as well in your painting to know maybe, okay, if you want to you draw attention to this area, make that bit more vibrant or this bit darker, uh, the contrast and the vibrancy will draw 
viewer's uh, eye to certain sections of the, the uh, painting. Um, and Yvonne's asking, what would be a orange substitute for the burnt? Um, any oranges, any orange is probably fine. Yvonne, maybe you can mix that with a teeny bit of, uh, if it's really vibrant, if, if, the, if the orange is too vibrant, you can mix it down with some neutral tint or just a bit of gray. I think that, yeah, because I have a really vibrant, like a perylene, a perylene orange here, and that's too much. It's probably, I kind of wanted to get a bit of a golden look to it. So, yeah. Um, that's looking good. So also what we can do is with the figures, we can start putting in um, little bits of color on top of the figures like that. Not all of them, but you know, even the cars. You can go in and just drop in some colors at the base and stuff here just to just to uh, get rid of the white of the paper. This is a bit of lavender, I think. Yeah. I haven't gone over this, this tram a bit. It's, it's like greenish turquoisey color underneath that tram. I'll just get a into that in there. That. Um, Plastic. Okay. Um, I think this is looking pretty all right for the first wash, guys. Um, so be up to this stage. Um, and you're watching along. Just remember to, and as long as you've got in, as long as you've got in some light colors running through this whole section, you're fine. What all that? Uh, I don't need too many colors at the moment. Um, any too many dark areas? Anyway. It's getting a, a little wash over this. Over the top. This one I just want to warm up a bit because we've got the purple in the background. So maybe a bit of that yellow would be good there. Yellow here, here, and at the base we can put some uh, cooler color or something down here as well. Change, change it. A move down but we're gonna to have to redo that a little later anyway um a little shadow running across there and in the window as well for the uh, uh window as well here tram yeah okay alrighty then um let's uh, give this a little dry and once it's dried, we'll put in all the shadows and bingo, I think it will be pretty good. So I'm just going to pause the audio so that uh, it doesn't bug you too much. Uh, I think you can hear me now. The audio had cut out for a second. So that's looking pretty good. I've dried that off. It's still slightly damp, but um, I'd say about like 80 to 90% are dry and the painting is almost done. Really what we want to do here is add on um, our remaining dark, dark areas, our shadows, and um, make everything kind of pop out, make all the the, tr the shadows and everything pop out nicely. So, um, how are you guys? How are you guys doing? Um, are you still with me? Let me know. And uh, if you have questions, let me just check the chats on the other on the other bit. Uh, Paul, oh, Paul's here as well, and also Nerida. Um, Nerida says the drawing so detailed. Not sure how it will. Uh, not sure how it will turn out. Uh, the colors and tones will have to save it. Yes, I think um, we've got a lot of tight sort of 
detailed areas we need to we need to create larger areas of shadow and just um i guess uh, running through the buildings and a large sort of mid mid tone running through the buildings and shadows on the ground little bits and pieces i think should be good um paul says very detailed drawing good morning from uk how are you doing paul um paul's a paul's an artist over um in the uk He's, he does um he, he does like animal uh, animal and nature sort of uh, subjects so plastic um plastic work uh right oh let's continue on okay so for this section i'm going to be using a smaller brush really just a number six round brush and if i have a number eight round brush as well this is going to help us for some larger areas so people often ask what color do you use for shadows there's so many options in terms of, of shadows so i uh for this particular one i'm going to be using some purple so this is some imperial purple okay which is a nice vibrant purple and we're gonna add a little bit of neutral tint in here to darken it up and also some Burnt Umber. And that is going to just dull this purple down a little bit. So if you can see, it's almost like a, it's like a really kind of dark muted purple in the corner there that I've mixed up. Okay, so we're gonna go through and find uh, basically a, a nice shape um, in the shadows and what have you. So we'll go and firstly look, for example, at the tram. And I, I really wanna start with this tram area first thinking about it for so long I know that it kind of um off that brush a little a bit more of that neutral tint we know that there's a runs all the way like across like that it's running all the way it's kind of like to the front of the scene comes in and look yeah comes in underneath the bottom like this Yeah, it's just a little shadow running over to the to the left of it, front left area like that. Um, we've also got other cars like these a couple of cars here, which will have a shadow underneath as well like that. I'm just going to darken there too. Um, car there maybe with a bit of shadow there underneath. Um, here I can just again imagine another shadow under that one under there, kind of connect them all up nicely. Um, and then as we get towards this side, again, this whole shadow just goes straight underneath the tram like that. Um, we've got figures as well. And I like to make the legs for these ones just a, probably a little bit darker like this. Pop in some color, yeah, and just some legs for them. This is when I'm, I'm saying, if you've got the legs drawn in in the wrong position or what have you, when you've got some darker paint like this, this helps to really uh, create and basically you can just redraw them in again. So draw that in. That's a bit of the shadow for that figure there, just joining on. Bit of that, just a little bit of that. You're going to have a bit of shadow running here for this figure as well, just left, there, there. Join up the legs a little like that. We've got a car here. There's a shadow underneath. We can just Figure that one out like that there. Another car there. Um, have a look. The front of that tram is also pretty dark. A little bit of darkness here will be good. Extra darkness. Top of that tram as well. There. Good. Um, Window, this darkness running through that window, this down into the ground. Have a look at it so far. It's looking okay. I think I'll like lift off a bit of paint around the edges here just to touch. Okay. Um, 
We've got shadows on these buildings as well near the back, so I can just, we can exaggerate some of these. Let's get in a bit of darkness here. Just a dark wash of color, the left-hand side of some of these buildings, area of the buildings. Look here as well. Uh, underneath, you notice uh, that area, that's pretty dark as well. So, the trick is to also preserve um, enough of the light on the buildings so that it's not all a bit dark section in there. Here as well, you might think, hey, this part of the dome is actually a bit darker, so we can color part of that in. So, a bit of that section of that dome as well, darken a bit more there, a bit here, a bit there. Bit here like that, and uh, soften. Finding an area is just too dark, or we're not making sense. Soften a bit by adding some more water. Lift off if you need to as well. Okay, you can hear this needs to be darker. Leave little. Bits of light just coming through. Can you see that? Just little bits of that yellow showing through in areas as well. So it doesn't have to be completely dark in there. Okay, but this shadow needs to be in this area behind the tram. Like that soft shadow is a bit here as well. Okay. Notice also the darkness here is not as dark as this uh, side of the tram because that tram is in the sunlight. So we're going to have more. A uh, little more light on that tram. Very subtle difference in tone, but it does certainly make a little difference there. Uh, let's have a look. What else do we do we have? We do have some. Uh, actually, this shadow was already put in there before. We are okay. Um, a little bit of shadow underneath the rooftops and uh, that sort of thing here as well. It's a good little bit here. Um, okay, great, great. This part of the right there, part of the clock tower, a little darker side. And I'll darken these trees off a bit in the background. I just darken that tree off in the background there. Um. A quick look at the uh, chats now. Stephanie says, "Yeek, very bold strokes with those shadows." Yeah, you just, you just gotta go. You just gotta go with it. Um, one of the things that really it still bugs me when you put when you go straight in with the watercolors, you'll find that the surface of the paper just looks shiny, and um, if you've got a dried layer in the background, it just looks really out of place. Like this bit here, it's just shiny and. Um, it reflects, especially because I've got the light above as well, it reflects the light back and it just looks like it's overpowering and the temptation is just to go in and lift off the paper and do stuff, but you've got to leave it and wait for it to dry. It flattens out and it looks much nicer afterwards. Um, this is very itchy. I Snevon says, uh, I see that you've taped the following page uh, of your sketchbook to protect them. I haven't been doing that, but we'll need to... Need to start. Um, I haven't taped this one. I haven't taped this one down. That's the last page. I've been doing so much painting. That's actually the last page. Um, you, if you've got a clip as well, you can clip the edges of it. That makes it a little easier. Um, and Valerie says that sky is looking good. Dan. Thank you. And yes, it's just some cerulean, uh, some cerulean blue Valerie and the. That's, I love the granulation in cerulean blue. I think we were talking a bit about uh, the Schmincke super granulating sets. Um, let me know how you found those because um, yeah, I've read your message. Yeah, I read your message before uh, about them, and I've I've heard about them. Uh, there's also these like Rockwell paints as well that are super like really granulating apparently. Um, but I know Schmincke has their own, and someone also asked about. A uh, granulating fluid that you can apparently add in to paints. Uh, I think they're made by Windsor and Newton. I haven't used them myself, but um, apparently they're pretty good. Yeah, if 
but I, I don't know too much about how they work, so I can't comment on whether they're uh, whether I think they're good or not. Okay, now there's some imbalance over here. That over on that side, I think there should be more bits and pieces for the buildings. So I'm just going to add in a bit of color for the heads of these figures as well. It's just a bit of a bit of pink, a bit of pink, and we can put in a bit of brown as well in there. We go just a bit of the heads of these figures like that sometimes also the windscreens you might want to put in a little wash of cerulean in here that's nice just to get a it's almost like a, a reflection of the sky a very quick little reflection of the sky like that okay good um so this section here that, that there needs to be some darkness in the buildings um behind i'm gonna just make sure i darken this uh these buildings down a touch too much but just enough so that they come out um and not seem like they form part of the the sky so just a little bit like that in fact i, I would have preferred to have done it all wet into wet kind of did before but i didn't get this this uh, color of the buildings in dark enough okay and that's looking good so you see how it's just looking like almost one big connected shadow shape that's what we want Okay, you're connecting this shadow from left to right of the whole scene, and the, the shadow also starts here, yeah, and then kind of here as well, and then that sort of just carries along. I mean, in fact, the middle section of this building is not completely white as well; it's slightly lighter in that section, darker. I mean, slightly darker in that section, but the shadows are more darker here. Um, that there uh great i'm gonna pick up some real dark paint now this is just pure neutral tint and um let's go in and get in some super dark contrast in these areas here um, i'm gonna just pop in a bit more underneath here the um section of the Of the um, building as well the train station you've got these little really dark sections in some areas which we can bring out and that's what i was saying before with the pen i'm using it doesn't have the capacity to, to really go super super dark as um as some of the this neutral tint i'm using so it's almost straight it's not straight from the tube but it's about got about um just enough water to make sure that it's not a paste you don't want to use that watercolor straight out of the tube as uh the only time you might want to do that is if you're using gouache or something. Good. And just anything on this side. Leave that in. there. Even here, should be a bit more darkness in that section, like that. Yeah, here maybe like that. There. Just try out some extra contrasts um you can even you know for example if you want to make this figure just a little bit maybe wearing like a, a darker sort of shirt or something you can just color that figure in darker color like that um put a bit of brown or something or a bit of color for the hair a bit of darkness running like that where you put the hair also determines where the figure's walking so i'm just putting it behind the head like that exposing slight part of the face kind of looks like they're walking in that direction it's a little trick that i've learned and this one here as well i think i'll potentially just darken oh i've forgotten to put the shadow for this week for the legs so we put in a bit of a bit of detail for this one like that a couple of lines this shadow in like that yeah okay i connect it up um good good there uh, ah this car would do with the shadow underneath as well darkness there that part of the tram again and back at this point where we're thinking uh i need to exaggerate the shadow yeah we're okay and you like this there there you're almost just cutting around the rest of these figures leaving um leaving a bit bit of that color on them 
lighter shades on them as well for sh uh, shirts and things like that that they're wearing um you know another thing i've noticed there's actually a, a large shadow coming in from that left uh from the right to left i didn't see that didn't really see that shadow uh Lindsay, uh Lindsay's heading off Lindsay Bange, uh she's one of my patrons thanks Darren I'm signing off now much appreciated Cheers, Lindsay uh oh, hope you like this one and um yeah give it a go once you once you get some time bit of darkness on that building I don't like just getting a light shadow now this area is kind of dried and I'm thinking why not put in a you know should we put in a shadow here that's the thing um let's maybe we'll try let's get in kind of like a shadow coming in from that side of the scene um that I'm going to just do it all in one hopefully all in one go cuts through the center like that um there just like with trees or something like that here it could be another one here and you the, it's crucial just to wait for that other bit of shadow to dry first so that we have uh just doesn't blend into the same color okay there there uh you know another good thing is to just reinforce some of these little lines on the ground these little perspective lines they help to uh, guide the viewer into the the eye into the scene so a little bit of this reinforcement will help this here yeah good okay. yeah almost like the tram tracks as well almost come up like that um this is looking all right uh so put a few little birds up into the sky and that if you're up here now there's a lot i feel like i could still work on with this scene um you know there's a, basically um this last bit where we're just polishing up small details and things take as long as you want with this part often it's the longest part of the painting because you're just finding small details you draw out and balancing it with the amount of looseness in the painting as well. I like to do these little birds because they help to bring the scene together. Uh, what I mean by that is they connect the sky with the rest of the painting, they kind of connect it with the buildings. Yeah, they start coming closer to the buildings and things like that. So the sky doesn't appear like just separate from the whole scene. The trick is to make them also. Uh, good good um distance away from each other the australian flag i'm going to put in some a little bit of ultramarine like that a little bit there there's actually one here as well a little bit there like that too much good um uh, so just thinking if there's anything else i need to do i'm I think we're uh, pretty much got most of most of what I wanted to have in here. The rest of it is just yeah, just tidying up little bits and pieces. Maybe you want to get some little shadows underneath some areas of the tram or what have you. Okay. Yeah. I'll use a bit more neutral tint. Get in these little kind of like dark spots. Dry off the brush and you kind of pick up neutral tint, dry off that brush and just like drop it in there. And you can get in just indications of little areas. Sort of detail. This on the edges there. There. It's really important to play um play around with the dark areas in the painting it's often i find beginners avoid um 
using too many darks because they're just uh, afraid in the, in the beginning initially when you're just starting out you you know, to go that strong usually it's just uh, quite um, quite a thing but it actually actually makes your painting You've got to exaggerate things sometimes in a scene like this because when we're reducing detail often reference pictures look really good because photographs able to capture so much in there but as we're painting from a photograph uh, drawing from a photograph often we can't get that level of detail so um, in order to make up for that and um, I mean, not to say make up for that. I mean, it's also a stylistic thing, but I find that having a focus on either contrast or vibrancy or just having Okay. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see or not. The stream just disconnected for a little bit. Um, just checking to see guys can still see me um everything's still connected check chats apologies for that i don't know what just happened Give it a little bit. Mm. Uh, yeah, let me know if you can hear me, guys. I think I think I might be disconnected, or there's there's some kind of technical issues. I mean, I've almost done, pretty much finished the scene anyway. But I just wanted to, um, yeah, just wanted to acknowledge some of you guys who were were messaging. Unfortunately, on YouTube, the stream, uh, I can't seem to connect back to the uh, to the stream on on YouTube. But um, let me just give me one moment. Let me just let me just see if I can do something. This is very annoying. This happened last time as well. Uh, hmm. Yeah. Let let me know. Let me know if you guys are still okay. If you can hear me, I'm just. I don't think I'm getting the chats coming through, or I'm not sure whether this thing is streaming or not. I've, Seen the last message from Stephanie, but that's uh, about it. Hmm. Okay, Paul says, oh, okay, I think there's a few chats. Paul says, can hear you here. Um, and uh, Romana says, can hear you. It's just going in and out. Okay. Yeah, apologies for that, guys. I really don't know what's going on. And I think with the, uh, I've, I can't seem to connect back to, YouTube as well, so um, I'm going to try one more thing, and if that doesn't work, I'll just continue on. Um, but good, um, good thing that you guys can still hear on on Facebook. Very frustrating. Uh, this has happened like a couple of times, but I mean, out of the the thirty something times that I've streamed, it's you know I've had a good run. Um, so yeah, let me know how how you're doing as well. We're just about finished. I just wanted to add in a little bit of white, a little bit of um, gouache to finish off the scene. 
and bring everything, pretty much just bring everything nicely together. And, um, and hopefully uh, answer the rest of your questions. Oh, oh wait, here we go. There are people, I can see your chats now on YouTube. That's good. Uh, yeah, for some reason I just couldn't see him before. <laughs> All right, jeez. Uh, I'm just have following um, and just having a look at the the chats to see who's who's asking any questions. If there's anything else, um, Valerie says just had a lovely idea for a painting. Don't know if you or others would agree, Darren, but the Taj Mahal. Yeah, that's a pretty good idea. Um, I'll put it on. I'll put it on. Maybe we can do it for one of the next, um, yeah, one of the next few lives. Uh, but I'll write that one down. I'll write that one down, Valerie. What do you guys think? Would you like to? Um, would you like to learn? Would you like to do the Taj Mahal? Would you like to do? If you have any ideas of other uh, landmarks or or things, um, areas that you'd like to paint, let me know. Um, so we'll be doing on Saturday, um, Ellen Whitney. I wanted to do a couple of scenes, a couple of uh, scenes of like Tokyo and um, what was it, Tokyo and, and Vegas. And so I thought, why not? Let's go do it. And I couldn't decide which one to do. I was going to think of Tokyo or Vegas and they both look um, like really sort of busy sort of scenes. But I think Taj Mahal would be, would be cool. It's like just it wouldn't be super tricky. Because we're just doing one building, but then at the same time, it's I, I, would, I think there'll be a lot of cutting around needed, a lot of negative painting to bring out the um, building in front. So uh, I haven't painted that scene before. I think it'll be a good idea. I'll, I'll um, we'll do that. We'll do that for one of our future ones. Write that down somewhere. Stick. Um, and V's here again. How you doing, V? Good to see you. Um, yeah, that YouTube was not streaming for a second before. I thought I was just completely cut off. So good thing, um, good thing you guys can can still hear me, which is uh, and see what's going on, which is good. Um, Shanolan's uh, Shanolan's fine. Matt's here as well. Hey, doing Matt? Good to see you back again. Um, okay. Fantastic. Uh, v saying it's happening on everyone's streams yesterday. <laughs> yeah. I'm still a bit of a newbie to some of this streaming, but I'm getting, I'm getting better. It's just more the technology sometimes that um, stuff's up when I'm using it. Nolan says Christmas scenes. Ah, okay. Christmas scenes. Of course, we, we're in the Christmas, um, Christmas sort of period, aren't we? So we can do... I'll put that down, write that down as well. Uh, maybe we could do some Christmas like sketches. You know, I I also make watercolor Christmas cards. If some if that's something you guys want to learn about, um, I can show you just how I make them as well. But mainly the paintings, I think, is uh, something I can talk about, like painting some snow, like some simple snow scenes, kind of thing. Write that one down. Nolan snow scenes. B. Um. So. Uh, um. Let's have a quick look. The chats. Yeah, V saying also same here. Christmas scenes. Wanted to, well, I wanted ice skating, ice skating uh, on an ice pond scene myself. Oh yeah, ice skating on ice. I'll put that down. I'll try to find it. It's all to do these reference pictures. I've got to find something that works that I think we could uh, pull off in watercolors. Like we could do like um, figures, people skating on a pond or something like that. That could be something different because we've never done figures before. Um, I can I can do portraits and I can do figures. I'm not uh, super super good at them, but I know the basics. So it could be something that we could do. Certainly, we could try together. 
well. I'm just putting, I'm just copying and pasting all these suggestions, guys. So bear with me. Um, the ice skating, nice pond scene. Um, Valerie saying problem with uh, problems with YouTube, not uh, yours, Darren. The video is fine, but traffic during busy times cause streaming problems. Okay, all right, cool. So looks like um. It looks like some people are having issues seeing the stream, some people not. But it did it did kind of like stuff up from my end as well before. And uh, V saying, Darren, there's a need for more. There's a need for more manly style scenes for Christmas cards. <laughs> what do you mean by that? <laughs> I'm just thinking, what's a, a manly Christmas scene? <laughs> Uh, Matt R says New Year celebration from Australia would be interesting too. Yep. Uh, Nolan says that sounds good. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll look some up. I'll look some up. Um, how about like uh, buildings with snow and stuff like that as well? Like I think I'll, I'll, something I wanted to try out too. Um, but uh, I know some of you like to learn how to do figures, like basic figures and. Um, yeah, just figures maybe on on a on a nice ring or something like that. Or yeah, I can definitely I can definitely try something out next time. I'll find I'll go through some references. I'm gonna have a quick look at the uh, chats for Facebook. Um, okay. Hmm. hmm. Romana, uh, yeah, I think people on Facebook are having, they say they can hear me, but they can't, but the screen is frozen. It's, I don't know what's going on. That's, that's, I hope, can you see now, uh, Romana? Does it look okay now? Um, Romana says, I've just found you. So do, uh, do I find you on Patreon? Where else? Where do you live stream? Yeah, I basically live stream here on Facebook and on YouTube, R Romana. So you can, um, you can go through and find uh, and find me on Facebook as well. Ah, uh, sorry, on on Instagram. Uh, I'm going, I'm going nuts on YouTube. So uh, I do have a Patreon. If you go to uh, Patreon.com/slash/watercolormentor, I have a whole bunch of classes. I've got 34 classes uh, on there. I think nearly that 36 now. All um, 200 videos that I've uh, made on there. So uh, there's a depending on which tier you sign up. I've also got like individual classes as well. If you check the, the link in the, the video description on, on wherever you are, uh, yeah, on, on Facebook or on YouTube, but yeah, if you drop it down, the link's in there. So yeah, they can buy it like individually or sell them individually or, or in the, um, or just have them on Patreon. But again, you can just watch along. I do have some portraiture classes on there as well, Ramona. But um, I, I can also do a lot, you know, I do a lot of these, live um, um anyway and you can learn a lot through watching uh, just watching me do these lives if you want to decide if you want to see whether um whether my teaching style or whether the stuff i paint is, is right for, for you you can just watch these and uh, decide later um or if you you know it's the same thing goes if you if you buy a course or you sign up for patreon and you don't like it it's not really for you um you can cancel it or if, and if you if you uh, want to refund i'm happy to give well, that's completely fine. Um, so you can just yeah, give it a try if you if you like it. Then if you don't, then um, that's that's also uh, that is also fine. Valerie says uh, no. The Taj Mahal has a fantastic garden in front, so perspective would be relatively easy, and the colors and water reflections incredibly vibrant. Um, take a look at. This. I, I want to. Hopefully, you can find because usually when I see these these photographs of the Taj Mahal, they're so. You, you you just you know what I mean? It's just in your face, it's right in the center, and and uh, I always like to find references or something where the subject is a little bit off center. It's kind of like when you draw when you're drawing the Eiffel Tower or you're you're painting the Eiffel Tower, and you know when you start off and you just when you're just learning, and some of them just have right in the center, and um, it's too obvious. I kind of want to find something that 
it looks a bit different, or at least I change up the change it up a little bit so that um, so 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 that we're using the reference more so as a as a as a guide, you know, um, to make it a bit more uh, interesting. So anyway, bit of that sparkle, uh, gouache. White gouache is really good retaining and getting back some of the highlights so often what happens is when you're painting you might go over areas that are um, that should remain light basically you get a nice wash on there but I think it's better to do that and just use the white go back into it and put some white on later because it just will look more natural so you know here's a bit of you know for example a bit of white here I'm just using for some of these figures on a bit here, there, you know, a bit on the shoulder for this person here. You, know, you can also put them on the cars like that, um, like that. You know, a bit on the, a bit on the buildings, like the edge. See here, just a tiny bit on the edges of some of these buildings, or the where you might get a bit of light that catches uh, the scene with the corner edges and things like that. It's always a good idea to. Try that out. Um, what else do we have in this picture? We do have actually some. There's a pole here that's running up. I didn't see it before. You can put that pole in, and also like we were thinking of some of these these lines, these kind of like tram lines coming in as well. Putting some of those in too. But this is see just touch and go, little bits of kind of highlighted areas. Notice even on the tram, there's these little white sections running through, uh, subtle, but underneath the window, top of the window even here, there's a little something like that. Here, you know, there's, you can just dab a little bit on like that as well, fine. Keep it interesting. Pour out a bit of a bit more light at the bottom here. A bit of light maybe catching here as well. Here. Very subtle and it, it always dries a little um it always dries slightly more flatter and less um, bright. So don't worry much about that um you know i can mix up a bit of this and for example this person i might think hey let's put in a briefcase or something here so something being like a shirt or let's have a look maybe blue shirt or something for this figure here like that Try some lavender or something here. Yeah. Yeah. And we can go around the edges with some neutral tint. That. Yeah. Let's get rid of that white back. Wash again. Pick that up. A bit here. Into the building, maybe a top section there. The edges of the windows. This little. Little bits uh, coming through like that. And I find it's really tricky when you're using gouache that's already dried on the, the paper because it just um, it just doesn't re-wet so well and you can never get it to the very light sort of um, it's a really light view that you can with straight from the tube so see this figure here just a little bit of light coming across the head like that and then through the front of the body there that's that's going to help maybe here you know shirt or something like that there you know we might also have bits and pieces in here there could be like a pole or something you might put through center or just a bit of a bit of white or something running through the center like that mix it up a bit 
little, little gouache, bits of gouache. Yeah, the trick is just to not overdo it. I don't know if you guys would like to learn about gouache painting as well. I can, um, I've done a few gouache paintings and I, I used to do them more a few years back. It's kind of similar, I don't know, I feel it's kind of similar to almost acrylics. So, um, it's very forgiving when you're using gouache compared to watercolors because you can just go over things again. It doesn't matter whether it's light or dark. Um, you can go over stuff and it doesn't, uh, you know, unlike watercolors, you kind of got to work, generally speaking, from a light to dark. And if you want to put in a bit of light on top of the dark that we're doing here, we have to use gouache because it's opaque. Okay, but, a, but let me know if that's something you're interested in doing as well. I can look getting something like that out in a few marks here. Okay. Um, I think that's pretty much it. That's, I mean, like there is technically some kind of pole here. Uh, so I, I don't know if that's something you want to do, but I can show you just, I mean, if I'm going to make it up, maybe here. Actually, like it's down. Yeah. I've got a bit of a pole. Okay. <laughs> there. Um, it's actually that right and um the the lines for the trams and uh, the sort of bits on top of the tram they also are helpful to help uh, kind of guide the viewer into the scene so i might pick up a bit of neutral tint and wet this down a fair bit and i've got a rigger and you can just not for the faint-hearted as well you can just sort of draw in a few okay good So I'm actually running across the street. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm like run down this direction as well in here. And, um, I reckon I'll call this one a day, but, um, yeah, let me know, let me know what you think. I, I think it looks, I think it looks all right. I, I, uh, really got a lot of, a lot of the, the initial contrast and things like that in for, uh, for the scene. I spent a fair bit of time, uh, drawing it. Um, let's have a look. Um, more chats Valerie says manly Christmas card would have a Chippendale stripper on wearing a Santa's hat oh I don't know <laughs> there's so far there's so far with these requests <laughs> oh my god um <laughs> I, I've forfeit the coffees <laughs> V saying uh, royalty free at Pixabay. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. Let's look some of them up. Um, and for those of you who have, uh, who are, you know, uh, you can message me also some reference pictures if you find a good, uh, decent reference photo. Um, message it to me, and I'll take a look at it. And no promises, but I'll do my best to incorporate it in one of the future, the future scenes future landscapes that I paint. So um, yeah, it just helps me out. So that, I spend so much time just trying to find reference photos. So if you've got an idea of what, uh, yeah, if you've got an idea of what you want to want to do, um, yeah, I, I want to challenge myself as well, because I, I tend to, when I'm picking stuff, I also tend to pick things that have a certain look to it, maybe my own uh, preferences. And um, Kind of helps me step outside my comfort zone a little bit and 
try something different and um hey perhaps uh, it will look good or perhaps i stuff up you know but i think uh it's a good good thing to always try something different and i also want to make sure i um you know i'm taking uh, some of your thoughts into consideration some of your requests into consideration as well um gouache uh is getting better and better darren margaret um she says wow love thank you margaret and uh i i did a melbourne scene like this before and i was not so happy with it and and so i, I think i i think this one's this this one looks better than the last one <laughs> certainly the last one that i did I do have another your watercolor one that i did maybe about eight months ago that i quite like as well um it's in the cupboard i'm not gonna pull that out but Marianne Levy says, uh, yes, please for gouache. Yeah, we could we could do that. Let me just um I'll have to usually usually with all these things, I'll have a little practice run um to get myself more familiarized with it. So I haven't used just pure gouache for a long time and there's a few other things to consider as well. So um that might be good for a future scene. Marianne, so I'll write that one down. Wash. Yeah, I think also if we end up doing portraiture for these, uh, if we do if we do portraiture for one of these, um, I'll put a, a photograph. I'll put I'll put up a photograph that you can trace, uh, like a tracing template, because to draw a portrait takes a really yeah pretty long time. So you know you could maybe just trace it or. I do the drawing uh, first, and then um, I can show you how to paint it live. Uh, that might be a bit easier. Or up to you guys. I mean, let let me know. Let me know. Uh, look, Yvonne says, love the painting. Thanks. And, and thank you, Yvonne, for suggesting this one, suggesting this one uh, with the trams. And uh, I... It's kind of tossing up between this one and then another one that just had like a real big tram in the center of this uh, of the scene and then there was a few figures it was easier um than this one but i thought hey this one's got a you know looks kind of challenging there's a whole lot of things going on in here let's let's give it a give it a go um okay v you sent it on patreon i'll have a quick look at it um later v once i grab something to eat um it's really good a good street market christmas scene and love your painting today the electric lines we gave it some depth thank you it uh i like I, what i like is this tram um there's a slight variation you can see the darkness here in the front of the tram and then the side just flying the shadow so i think we got the front of it quite down packed quite well um i did have one at the i did like a loose drawing Painting of one before here, another kind of tram scene. Where is it? Yeah. See, is it up on the screen? Okay. Yeah. So that's just in pure watercolors, and um, you can see if you trace the shadows, shadows all connect up. There's some lighter shadows, then go to darker shadows down the bottom, come up here, and then they combine with the shadow of the tram. I've not put in the uh, Tram lines or anything on that. Kind of look like a bus actually. This is in also um this is in uh, Flinders Street. So that clock tower that we were drawing before, uh, that one here, is actually this here when you're looking down the street like straight at it. So um, this is I think Elizabeth Street looking down towards Flinders Street. I found this photo one. Pixabay. So, but you can see as well, same thing. Just using these shadow patterns um, to get in a large kind of mid-tone value, and almost like a full-tone value down the bottom as well. The darker you make it, the more stark the contrast uh, contrasts will will, will uh, be. So, um, yeah, line wash and watercolors. They 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 have different styles, different looks. I find the watercolors look a little bit more clean. And a bit more looser from like I paint pretty quick as well. Um, whereas if you got stuff like this, it's a little bit more refined. There's a little bit more detail, and you can make out generally what uh, generally what's going on because the pen detail is uh, preserved. 
preserved in there. So yeah, I hope you like this one. I feel I could, you know, I could do do it again and, and uh, I'll change the composition. I'd probably make more another car here um, as well. Somewhere in here. What else would I change? I don't know, maybe a larger figure. Let me put a big figure here in the front as well. Um, let me know. Um, yeah, especially like V, if you got yeah, if you got suggestions, V, you're happy to happy to take them as well because um, we haven't done we haven't done any uh, we haven't done any of your classes. We have to do these uh, the, your Zoom classes at some stage. But if there's something that you want to do, uh, request. In the meanwhile, I can always um, just create a class uh, as part of the these online workshops that are run. So yeah, I'll check my um, I'll check I'll check the messages later. Um, Valerie says, bye Darren, have to leave now, beautiful painting, as always. Uh, thank you, Valerie, and thank you so much um, for joining today. Appreciate it. Uh, just trying to go through the chats, guys. Um, really annoying because um, I, I, um, I need to buy another computer screen, so I've got everything all on one screen, and so when I'm reading through all of it, it's tricky. To sort of get through the comments, but I want to make sure because you know, some of the questions are really good and keep me really keep me going as well. There's a lot of good suggestions here as well. Um, and Romana says, "I woke up at two a.m. and this is the best two hours I've spent." Thanks, um, Romana. Uh, um, thank you for staying. Thank you for for joining at two a.m. I really didn't. I really don't expect anyone in on the planet to be up at two a.m. watching this. Um, but if you are, you know, that's why I try to make sure that, you know, if you have questions and things, I can help you live so that you get some uh, some better value out of it. I am trying to get, uh, do some of these at a better time for, for you guys, maybe earlier in the morning next week and the next few weeks. Um, put some time off from my normal uh, my normal day job, so that will um, free up some extra time in the morning so then you guys uh, over in the States and also in Melbourne, it'll be like a good time for both sides um rather than you know later uh you know, later at night kind of thing the yeah, taj mahal seems to be hitting a few people that are that are keen to do that um uh, paul bruce says looks really great you've really uh, you've captured the beauty of flinders really well thank you paul and it doesn't take it doesn't take all that much um it, it, i think the front of the the front of the station as long as you've got a bit of that in um it, it, you know you've got the, the life and um, sort of looseness and this feeling of movement, I think that's the that's the key there. I appreciate it, Paul. Um, Margaret says beach scenes, beach scenes, and uh, cards will be lovely and snow too. Shrine of Remembrance. Uh, Marianne Levy says, how about the Shrine of Remembrance for a subject to paint? Uh, yeah, let me. I'll, I'll write that down. Um, thinking how can we uh, put down. We have some figures in there as well. I'm just thinking from what angle. Um, could always walk over there and take some photos. It's so funny because I, you know, I was trying to look for a photograph of Flinders Street, and then I was trolling through, and I found this one, and I thought, well, I could really just walk down and take a photograph. Um, but I guess everything here has, you know, the trams running through and things going on at the right time. But very hard. You looking at a reference photo, it's never, never be able to find a, a super good one that. Um, we're well, not a super good one, but it's very hard to find a reference photo that encompasses everything, um, all the elements that you want to portray. So I, I did notice there's just no figures in the other one. There's no, no, not much life in there. So I added some of these people in here and I think that helped to balance it out. So we've got stuff at the bottom, at the top, and the eye sort of moves around the scene a bit better. So... Something to something to think about. Not an expert on composition, but it's just something. In, after a while, you kind of, you know, if you look at if you just look at lots of different artists, go to art galleries, um, and just look at stuff online, you'll notice how people compose their paintings. And um, some artists are just really, really uh, so good at it in um, the placement uh, of of objects. And they've it's it's almost like they spend more time thinking of where to put everything than they are actually. Painting it, it makes it makes a difference. But getting the thought process of composition of how to compose a painting, I think that's a good thing. And you're painting, you're kind of like painting inside your mind, in a, in a sense. Um, let me just write this down. So 
but there's got a few more um, suggestions. I'm really not so good at multitasking, guys. So I'm kind of. I'm gonna write this down. <laughs> Mary Ann, so a gouache shrine of remembrance. Um, and then I think you said something like uh, cards, didn't you? Cards, snow. And then we've got uh, Margaret who says, uh, Margaret McFadden. Uh, so beach, yeah, beach scenes too. Yeah, I've done some beach scenes before, Margaret. You can look at the. You can also look at the the previous um lives that I've done. There's a. I think I've done almost three or four beach scenes. They they're good fun to do. Maybe I could do a, a watercolor one at some stage. Oh, uh, I'm just having a look. The solitary forays from India says, "Hey, I love your workshop and paint along with you. How do?" I show you upload my uh, output for you to uh, see. Thanks a bunch. Haven't been to Melbourne, but uh, I got to sketch and paint part of it. Hey, that's the best. Um, that's the next best thing. Hey, so if you're, you're, uh, yeah, sketch it. I mean, I've, I've, I do the same thing. I sketch a lot of places like I want to travel to as well. So uh, thank you for joining Solitary. The page is. Uh, facebook.com slash groups slash watercolor mentor and you can upload your, your your painting there so we can have a look at it um there's, a, there's, there's quite a few there's two groups there's also another there as well um it's quite a few members um but yeah you can upload probably the watercolor mentor one's be, uh, better because it's more s directly related to the, the the classes and workshops that, that we have up here so yeah, facebook.com slash group slash watercolor mentor. And um, you get a lot of feedback from everyone. And uh, if, if I get around to to, um, to to having a look at it, I'll, I'll do my best to give you some feedback as as well. Uh, thank you for coming along. Uh, Romana says, this was so worth it. You see me, um, you see me all the time now. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, I'm glad you, um, I'm glad you enjoyed it and that you uh and that you've uh uh you got something basically you got something out of it because if uh you probably should get some sleep as well <laughs> feel bad for keeping you up with what's it two hours two three nearly nearly three hours Kate saying figures um can I get a repeat of Flinders Street Kate says are you do you mean Kate the, whether you can replay this one or or you want to do like another scene of Flinders, because this will be you be able to access this one afterwards. I don't I don't remove it or anything, uh, so you can replay it. But let me know. And um, solitary it says love your online sessions and uh, sent me some stars. Thank you so much, solitary. Appreciate it. Um, really appreciate you being here. And um, Dorenda. Thika, Thika, Thorinda Thika, um, says, well, I got, I got it on the, um, text is so small because I'm just like looking at it from a distance. Well, I got it, I got on the end of it, but very, uh, enjoyable. Didn't realize the time difference when I signed up. Yeah, people often comment on that. They're like, is it seriously, is it seriously at 2 a.m.? Um, <laughs> for us here in Melbourne, it's like 6, um, 6 p.m uh but like i said i'm gonna try to do some more of these workshops um in the next in the coming weeks at a time that's perhaps more suitable for both people in melbourne and also for people in uh, over in the states so um hopefully for you guys in the states it may be around 6 6 to 7 p.m if i come up uh do these at you know, 9 maybe 10 a.m in the morning or something so fantastic um and yeah, I guess last thing is, yeah, if you like the video, please, uh, yeah, just if, if you enjoy the video, like it. And um, that kind of helps me to get it out to more people and share it as well. Like if you are part of watercolor groups or you just, um, yeah, you want to share it with a friend, uh, that kind of thing, share my YouTube channel and also um, the Facebook page. It really helps me out. Um, you know, thank you, Shinolan. You, I think you're always like sharing my stuff. Um, 
uh, afterwards. I really appreciate it. Um, and if you're looking for more kind of classes, a little bit more material as well, I do have a Patreon. You can check in the description, Patreon, and also classes that you can uh, view to um, be. Um, these and I got a few, you know, a few, few comments there. That one is missing the line. So I originally thought that was a bus. Uh, today you nailed this one. Awesome. <laughs> I'm glad you think so. Um, I, I think uh, I think there's a good balance of light and darks, and there's a looseness and form in here. So I'm happy that you um, enjoyed it. And uh, V says we don't add anything, but Anything, the tram is all clear and viewable, and the and the point it sits in front of the building is excellent for the viewing. Fantastic the tram steals the focal point in the movement across the page in front of the large architectural building centered. It and it makes a statement. It does yeah, it's very Melbourne these these trams. Um, when I moved from Perth, we don't have them in Perth. We've just got buses. So that was something that really intrigued me. I just never seen them before. So. Um, yeah, but they do have them in, I think, Brisbane and Adelaide. They're different, though. They're kind of really thinner-looking trams. They're, they're pretty cool. Uh, thank you, um, Marianne. Thank you for coming along. Uh, she says, thanks for tonight's session. Margaret says, yes, sir, I've never painted in gouache, and I have a set of them. Yeah, gouache is interesting. It's... Uh... Still watercolors. It's still watercolors, but you kind of get the layer layer over the top and build up detail. It's uh, um, and if yeah, they they kind of uh, they remind me of acrylics basically. That they remind me a little bit of acrylics. The drier sort of, the dry kind of flat and um, yeah, they're nice. I don't use them all too often. Um, okay, guys. Uh, I don't think there's any more. Questions. I did take down some requests for next time and appreciate it and uh, appreciate you guys being here. And uh, I might end this now and I will see you next time.